Hi everyone, it's me again. Uh, I'm here to tell you guys about what happened in Project Hexapod uh, from the week of the 19th to the 26th. So this week we made a lot of progress. Uh, we built out a bunch of things on the hydraulic power unit frame, including adding rubber feet so that we can run the frame on the ground instead of just in the robot. Um, we welded on the pump mounts and aligned it to the engine fairly well. We uh, made a spacer to allow for the yoke that attaches the pump to the engine. Um, it allows it to be fully installed given the positioning of the engine, which wasn't exact. Uh, and finally, we made a lot of progress on closed loop control of the leg, and we'll show you the very first images of the leg operating in something resembling a walking gait. So here we have Spark and Mike Soroka. They are working on the uh, HPU frame, and what they're doing is actually putting in mounts, uh, rubber feet on the bottom of the frame that will allow us to run the hydraulic power unit when it's not installed in the robot, when it's just sitting on the ground. Uh, the other advantage of the bumpers they're putting on is that they actually raise the frame enough to get a pallet jack underneath the whole structure. So, what Mike just picked up is going in four places. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Feet work. <laughs> Alright, precision taping job. Installation complete. So, Mike and Dan are taping a laser pointer to the shaft of this pump. We're trying to align the pump to the engine. And, you know, that's a little bit hard because there's this big gap. So, what we're doing, what we just did is taped a laser pointer. So the output shaft of one of our old pumps. And we're going to rotate that laser pointer and watch the circle that it makes on the engine. And that's going to tell us when we have approximately centered the pump on the engine. Oh, that's a nice noise. <laughs> so that looks pretty perfect, actually. Except for the noise. So it started off as a ginormous chunk of aluminum because we had ginormous chunks of aluminum lying around and we need this today. And uh, we're milling this down to a precision spacer. Um, pretty much we welded up our frame for the HPU and we set our engine in and then we realized that the yoke that goes between the engine and the pump wasn't quite long enough to meet up between the engine and the pump. So this interfaces with the motor and pretty much lines up and then on the mating side I'm going to be machining in um, the features that are on the engine currently so that the yoke hey, can sync up with that and bolt in and effectively be a precision spacer. So this is the result of the work that we've done over the past week. You can see the spacer that Aiden's been working on on the left. That spaces the yoke assembly out a little bit so that it makes contact with the spline coming out of the pump. Um, that spacer was required because we didn't put the engine in the exact perfect position and we didn't think we'd be able to. Um, this yoke is what transfers rotational energy from the engine to the hydraulic pump. Um, it's designed to allow for a lot of misalignment. You can see two U-joints in this yoke assembly that allow for a lot of variation in angular placement of the two shafts with respect to each other, as well as parallel misalignment. What we also managed to do this week is get the uh, leg under closed loop control for the very first time. Uh, we did this by essentially using the gains, the PID gains, from our simulation to control the actual leg. Usually it's pretty hard to come up with a set of values that is appropriate for a control loop. It involves a lot of hand tuning, um, but in this case we were able to get a leg up, as it were, um, by using our simulation that has physical modeling in it to tell us about what we needed. 
It worked out fairly well. The leg's still a little bit shaky, but that's going to be a lot of tuning over the next couple of weeks. Um, in general, we are pretty happy that we could just start the leg software up for the first time, use games from the simulation, and be close to right. Not perfect, but close to right. Key and James, what are you working on? <laughs> uh, we are in the hell spiral that is um, figuring out the guiding mechanical dimensions for the light. So James has a copy of the simulation open. Mm -hmm. I have a copy of the bare bones wire sketch of joint layouts, right? So I can basically say, I want to make hips wider, or I want to make, you know, the thigh longer or the lower leg longer, whatever. Um, and that affects my mechanical design. And what we then do is spiral back and forth where I say, hey, can we try this hip configuration to fit this new HPU frame we built? Right? And James can say... And I take it and I walk around with it in simulation and I can say, you know, this bumps our flow requirement by 10% or saturates torque on the hip hitch joint of the front legs or something like that. Um, right. So what we're currently working on, we've redone pitch. We uh, didn't like the fact that it doesn't go through horizontal, right? So the robot can never extend its legs downwards. Um, so we added range of motion to pitch and we switched cylinder types. Our current cylinders have a lot of backlash in them and they aren't very rugged construction. So we wanted to switch to welded cylinders that have uh, pin joints instead of this weird clevis thing we need to design around. Um, so we're in the middle of update, we updated pitch, we just updated yaw, and we're about to update the knee joints to take this new type of cylinder and to maybe play with this range of motion a little bit to fit the simulation better. Okay, that's it for this week. Um, tune in next week. We are assembling the uh, components of the HPU, putting fluid pathways in, putting accumulators on it, etc. Uh, we are starting the actual mechanical design of the legs and we're doing more controls work. So stay tuned.